But a lot of this is built on false spiritual experiences. And that's the first approach that we have to some of these ecumenical uh, and religion of the future questions, right? Uh, and if we think back to Brave New World, which is interesting because Huxley does come up in this book, by the way, uh, which is good. It's great. We think back to Brave New World. Huxley says you're going to get a civic created religion that's kind of like masonry mixed with anglicanism or something like that uh that'll have charismatic worship services and like sex dance parties i'm not joking <laughs> all right so uh huxley's talking about charismatic stuff now if you go back and you watch huxley's berkeley lecture where he brags about all this stuff and admits, by the way, that he's part of the conspiracy. He's not a liberal. A liberal humanitarian. Uh, there's a great point in that lecture where Huxley talks about revivalist preachers. I'm not joking. He talks about John Wesley and revivalism. Now, why on earth would Aldous Huxley be interested in revivalism, charismaticism, and John Wesley or Jonathan Edwards or any of the hellfire brimstone uh, Americanist phony balonies. Well, because of the power of preaching the spoken word and false spiritual experiences. And that's why, for example, the CIA and the Pentagon were interested in Billy Graham crusades. And uh, you can find this detailed in uh, Ingdahl's book, uh, Lost Hegemon. But I went and dug this up too. It's all true. All right, so you, you can dig all this up. Just Google uh, Pentagon uh, connections, CIA connections to evangelicalism, revivalism. Uh, there's a great article that I just came across by... Uh, I'm not advocating this website, by the way. I don't know anything about it, but I just read this article. It was good. <clears throat> Barbara Aho? I don't know. But uh, her, she wrote a good piece talking about the Jesus movement, the charismatic movement, and their connection to the CIA. Yes, exactly. Because the Jesus movement was also connected to Laurel Canyon and that kind of stuff. So we're getting a lot of, we're finding a lot of our suspicions that we've talked about uh, for a long time actually are being borne out by you know independent researchers and people putting together these kinds of essays and this this essay is called antipas uh, cia connections a-n-t-i-p-a-s cia connections so i don't know anything about barbara aho i'm not advocating her work or anything beyond this article Yes, and that ties in perfectly with what we're talking about here because <clears throat> we did a boiler room that was really good on CIA usage of cults. So if you haven't listened to that, go check that out because we talk about Laurel Canyon and we talk about Jim Jones and all that. Uh, you can also find in the archives my interviews with James Kelly on uh, cults, Jim Jones, Nation of Islam, all that stuff. Good uh, refresher type stuff. But as we were saying, the false spiritual experiences in the Hindu logos. What? Yes. Hindus will talk about a logos. They'll talk about a trinity. They'll talk. They'll use a lot of these terms. Don't fall for it. And I've read Ananda Kumaraswamy and the perennialists and the traditionalists who try to talk about Hinduism as a good thing, and it's not. Uh, it's it's a very deceptive satanic religion i believe and they will use these terms just as kind of trickery to the same way that mormons will use these terms and try to trick people into joining their mormon cult because they talk about jesus and getting saved and all this crap what is the number one red flag for this stuff well it's very very obvious once you think about it especially if you have any kind of sort of biblical basic biblical knowledge is that <clears throat> we would say that law from God is a good thing and that liberty presupposes law, ultimately divine law. So you can't be a human person without some 
defining limits and that's not a bad thing limits and boundaries are not a bad thing Acts 17 26 says God made all the nations from one and set their determined times and boundaries so limitations are a good thing in the biblical worldview they're not bad ethnoi is a good thing right the Tower of Babel was dispersed by God because he saw that it was a good thing right to not have humans try to unite in under a world Babylonian government because it would be oppressive and even worse so that's why we have the Tower of Babel but of course mankind and the EU and their Babel logo and all this and the UN thinks that they can erect a an earthly kingdom without God without Christ without divine law now this can't happen it's always doomed to failure and it it's uh, ultimately satanic and that's why it turns into uh, like the worst thing ever with you know 100 million skulls remember Dostoevsky's demons right we're gonna have a world revolution for freedom uh, we're gonna build the utopia oh oops sorry it's gonna take 100 million dead people to build our utopia that's the result of man's law autonomy so we would say that divine law is a good thing and it's it's health it's medicine it's freedom you know, this is uh, psalm 119 right that goes into great depth speaking of god's law and it's the logos who gave all those laws right so get out of here orthodox gnostics we don't need you talking about how jesus is the love god of the new testament and jehovah is the hate god of the old testament and that is very popular in faux american orthodoxy but you are just much heretics so get out of here uh so shiva okay shiva shrines and and what is the point of all this self-worship and this is the big key here this is the the uh, great apologetic point actually is that hinduism's sort of founding principle is that you are god this is what all the cults are going to tell you to oh or you're god or you're going to be god you're the real god the real god is within you well that's an obvious lie because that's what genesis 3 talks about right this is what the deceiver is what satan says in genesis when he goes against divine law he says no 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 no! don't listen to divine stipulation and law you are your own god god doesn't want you deciding for yourself right here we have the libertarian anarcho eden movement <laughs> occupy eden by by uh, lucifer here and so prelest is the basic orthodox spiritual principle that we want to avoid when it comes to quote spirituality and that is the sin of pride and being puffed up thinking that you get it all figured out uh which saying that you're god is pretty much the most extreme form of that right prelest in the extreme that hinduism whispering in your ear that you are god hinduism has a lot of black magic it has a lot of gobbledygook and dangerous stuff uh, and ultimately ends up in monism and this is what we said that the idea that all reality is one reality and that difference and distinction is all illusion and the source of bad the source of badness the source of evil is in distinction this is a common teaching of all the eastern philosophies and unfortunately platonism and aristotle ultimately well we don't believe that we don't believe that there's something bad about being distinct there's nothing bad about being unique there's nothing bad about being about difference god created an established difference and we believe that in god there's no dialectical tension between the one and the many likewise in the world in man's experience we need to not be trapped in dialectical tensions right now where we differ now the, the eastern philosophers i mean far east they'll agree with that they'll say ah yes you are right we need to not be trapped in dialectics you get it my son uh, <laughs> uh jason you get it uh, but their answer is nonsense you see they have the bad they're they're getting a little bit right there with their they're wanting to get rid of the dialectics the problem is that they offer the solution that is self-negation self-destruction self-annihilation right so uh, get rid of the self 
dissolve into thusness, dissolve into the absolute. Don't you got to cease to exist? So ultimately, no, this is stupid. This is uh, obviously diabolical. Uh, and you could. This is also why in far eastern states in history, you have the most extreme forms of statism, right? Like you can't use the like you you speak of we right you, you don't even look at the emperor and all this gobbledygook the chinese emperor because you are nothing you are a you are a drop of water in the giant vast ocean that is embodied in the emperor and the collective well no we don't believe that and we don't believe that because we don't believe in the philosophy that says that distinctions are evil right so in our day is very popular with the UN or the Huxley model. If you read Huxley's perennial philosophy, this is what he says. He's talking about the new religion there, the new world religion. And he says, oh yeah, we'll have these little tidbits, uh, breakfast buffet aspect of different religions. Uh, you'll t we can even talk about grace, right? We'll talk about grace. But ultimately, the God that we're worshiping here is the impersonal absolute. That's what Aldous Huxley says in the perennial philosophy. So, no, we don't want any of that. We believe that's satanic. That's diabolical because it means that there's no such thing as personhood, right? And this is this is the great error of our day is the rejection of personhood and you only get personhood with a personal God. So out with the monism, out with the self-worship. And why do I say all that? And what was I saying about law being good? Because the law says avoid idolatry. Okay, so idolatry is what gives birth to all this stuff. Idolatry is saying, I'm God. Saying, I'm God, well, number one, it's not true. Uh, it's also the height of pride and pre-lest. Uh, and it's self-destructive. That's the point here is that, see, you see, law is given for health, for your good. You know, what did Jesus say about the Sabbath? The Sabbath was given for man, not man. Man was made, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath, right? To the Pharisees. Because they they tried to turn the law around into being this, this self-destructive thing where, oh, you can't even be healed because it's the Sabbath. Well, that's ridiculous, right? And that's uh, a form of idolatry. In the same way, Hinduism is an idolatrous religion, not just because you've got all these little idols everywhere, right? Idolatry is first and foremost a sin of the heart, and then it gives expression in bodily postures or whatever. But it begins in the heart by saying or attributing deity or godhood to a thing that is not God. And to therefore then subject oneself to creation as a subject or slave when God made man in his image to be the master of creation.